Hello! Today I'm going to show you how to make this 12th scale wardrobe and for this project I've used again one of my favourite words for working with, a beche and that's spelled O-B-E-C-H-E a lovely closed grained craft wood and you'll need three um, different thicknesses of wood and I'll put all of those in the cutting list glue a good wood glue, I always use Gorilla Glue a craft knife this is a Swan Morton knife with a metal handle and it takes size 10A blades and these are readily available if you search Google or even eBay you should be able to find one a steel rule for measuring and for cutting the wood along with the craft knife if you want to know more about cutting wood, I've got a video called Tips um, for Working with Wood and I'll tell you about cutting wood. Lots of other tips and advice in there as well. A nice sharp pencil for accurate marking. Cocktail sticks to apply the glue, which I just dispense onto a piece of cereal packet card. That makes it easier to apply. To hinge the doors, I've used the pin hinge system, so you'll just need some normal dressmaking pins and a pair of pliers. I use masking tape and clamps to hold the wood together while the glue is drying. To shape the wood for the lovely moulding at the bottom there and these shaped pieces in the door, you'll need a piece of paper, a pair of scissors and a, this tool which is called a scribe. Just a tool with a nice sharp point on the end. I've used varnish um, for my wardrobe, but you could also paint it if you want a more contemporary look. And I've just used a normal household interior varnish. You'll need four um, draw knobs, door and draw knobs. And these are 2.5mm wooden knobs. And these are available in my Etsy store. I'll pop a link below. And finally you'll need a mini hand drill, that's for drilling the holes again for the pin hinges and also um, some sort of desk vise or clamp to hold the wood in while you're drilling. Okay, I think that's everything you're going to need. The cutting lists are coming up next and then we'll get started. OK, so we're going to begin by making a pencil mark for the clothes rail, 19mm from the top of each side piece and centrally. So begin by making a faint pencil mark, 19mm, or three quarters of an inch from the top of the piece, the top edge, like that, and then just place your ruler across and then just make a pencil mark in the centre make that mark a little bit bigger and then you can erase those pencil lines there. okay and then bring in your back piece and I've just dispensed some glue here onto a piece of cereal packet card and I'm using a cocktail stick to apply it with I'm going to apply it down the long edge of the back piece And then glue the side piece to the outside edge of the back piece so that the top and bottom of each piece are flush. And press that together. And then always have a clean cocktail stick handy just to remove the excess glue from along the join. and then bring in the top piece and you've got three pieces of this size so the top, the bottom and the shelf piece so take one of those pieces and apply glue to one long edge and one short edge and then glue that piece into place along the top pushing it right into that top corner and so that the top edge is flush so just use your finger to run along the top of the back 
piece and that side piece and then just pull that side piece in and that will square the whole thing up again using your clean cocktail stick to remove the excess glue from inside the wardrobe and that piece can be put to one side to dry so in the cutting list I advise you to cut the draw stops so that the shortest edge is in direction of the grain as a normal rule you'd cut the longest edge of the wood in the direction of the grain but in this case because the front of this drawer is going to be facing towards the front of the wardrobe and will be visible the edge of the wood that runs with the grain is always neater so if you're cutting a piece of wood where the shorter edge is going to be at the front of the piece going to be visible then always cut the shortest edge in the direction of the grain and that will just give you a nice neat finish to your piece of furniture so that's just why I advise you to do that. And now we're going to drill holes um, in these for our hinges. Okay, so when drilling holes in wood, you'll need something to support the wood with. And these little desk vices are really handy. So that just slides onto the edge of your worktop and then tightens up. And then when working with um, soft wood, I always just put a piece of kitchen towel into the clamp into the vise and that then stops it from marking the wood so open that out just slot that in and then you can slot a piece of wood in and the edges of the vise won't mark it so tighten that up make sure it's in there nice and sturdy and then you want to make a pencil mark that is two millimeters back from the front short edge of the piece and in the centre. So make your two millimetre mark first and then you can go across and make your central mark like that. And then make sure that you keep your drill upright otherwise the drill bit will split through the wood. and I've got a 0.75 millimetre drill bit in there that's less than a millimetre or I think it's one thirty second of an inch and it's just um, a big enough drill bit to take a, so that the hole will take a dressmaking pin which we're going to be using for our hinges and this is a broken one but I use it because that's just the sort of length that I like to go through the wood so about six millimetres or quarter of an inch you want to actually drill into the wood so do that on both of the draw stops okay so on this project we're sort of working from bottom to top and that, that will all become clear as we work through the project so apply glue to the side of the draw stop just going to put a little line in there and along that back as well just as high as the draw stop there it doesn't have to be exact and then you want to put the draw stop in place so that the hole is obviously at the top and towards the front edge like that so press that into place so it goes right into the corner Remove the excess glue like that, and then these have a tendency to try and pull away. So I always just use a, a clamp on there. So just clamp that into place. Make sure that back edge is sticking, and then take the remaining one, and again so that the hole is towards the top and the front. Just apply glue along one long edge.
I'm going to glue that into place right at the edge of what is the bottom piece. So make sure it's flush along that side. And then press that into place. And then whilst they're drying, just pop that to one side and take the shelf piece. And we're now going to drill holes um, 1.5 millimetres or 1 16th of an inch from this side, so from the short edge. So just make a little pencil mark there, 1.5 mil from each edge. And then 2 millimetres back from this front long edge. Make a pencil mark there. And the same at the other side. And then again, using that same thickness drill bit, just drill a hole in each corner. Okay, so bring your main piece back in and just pop that clamp off and then this is our shelf piece so that's going to go there and what you can do before you glue that into place is just take a couple of um, dressmaking pins and just check that the holes are lined up so just check that that pin goes in it doesn't have to go all the way in so you won't be using pins as long as this but we're just checking that the holes are in alignment and that one as well and that's fine and if they weren't you just maybe need to make a slightly bigger hole to whichever side you need to go to so I'll just pop those out so then apply glue along the top of each uh, draw stop And go over the hole that's okay and then you want the holes so that they're along this front edge so apply glue to one long edge and one short edge and then glue that one into place Pushing it down onto the draw stops and pushing it right into that corner and against the back of the wardrobe. Making sure that the draw stop is lined up with the edge of that side piece there. Again, remove the excess glue. Okay, and then bring in the final of those three pieces, which will now become our top piece. And again, we want to drill holes so that they're 1.5 millimeters from each side, and two millimeters, or five sixty-fourths of an inch from the front edge. So that's 1.5 millimeters, one sixteenth of an inch from the side, and two millimeters or five sixty-fourths of an inch from the front. Okay, and then we can glue that piece into place again so that the holes are towards this front edge. So apply glue again to one long and one short edge. A bit too much on there. And then put that into place, making sure that these top edges are all flush. And again, you can just bring that side edge in to meet the side of that piece. Press that all together. And 
don't forget to remove the excess glue from the inside edges. Okay, so I just realised as I was removing the excess glue that I should have pointed out that the hole we made for the hanging rail should have been on this inside, at the side edge. So I've just remade that. Mine disappeared down there somewhere. So if you were following me and did the same thing, sorry about that. But you'll just need to remake the pencil mark. So measure the 19 millimetres or three quarters of an inch from this top edge and then just pop your ruler in there and find the centre and remake the pencil mark. Okay, so now take your piece of dowel and just apply a little bit of glue to one end and then just attach that so it sits over the pencil mark. And press that into place. Now we can attach the remaining side, so apply glue to all of these side edges. Don't forget to do a little blob on the end of the rail. And then bring in the side piece so that your pencil mark for your rail is on the inside edge. And just attach it at the bottom there, making sure that it's flush with the bottom of the wardrobe. And then just use your fingers to make sure it's flush along the back and the top edge. And then just very carefully turn that over and then you can just pop the rail over the top of that pencil mark there. Press that down. Remember to remove the excess glue. Turn that over, just make sure it's all staying where it should. And then I'm just going to use a couple of strips of masking tape and I'm going to put that right over the side piece like that. Pull it nice and tight. I'm just going to put another piece on that front as well. And then I also just want to put a piece right across the front just to hold that rail nice and tightly into place. Like and again, I'm just going to put that clip back over that um, draw stop down there. So there's our sort of basic wardrobe structure and that can now be left to dry. So once you've allowed enough time for the glue to dry, remove the masking tape and then just gently sand along each of those sides just to remove any sort of splinters that the masking tape may have pulled up when you removed it. And then take the side mouldings and we're just going to bevel one long edge of each piece. So to do that, have your piece of uh, medium grade sandpaper on your worktop. Hold the moulding against it at a 45 degree angle and then just sweep it towards you. And you don't have to press too hard and already that's beginning to bevel off there. And then you can just take a piece of fine grade sandpaper and just tidy that up. Remove any sort of rough edges. And then put the wardrobe on its side and then just apply glue along that bottom edge and just to the thickness of this bottom piece of wood, so 1.5 millimetres or 1 16th of an inch and that doesn't have to be exact but that's just how high up we're going to place the moulding. So lay the moulding into place so that the front edge is level with the top of this bottom sheet and just sort of place the back by eye and then what you can do is take your ruler and just measure from the top of the wardrobe to the top of that moulding at the front and then measure along the back and just make sure that you've got the same distance and then that will just ensure that it's straight and that just needs to go down a tiny bit there and 
And just make sure that the front edge is staying where it should. Now you can just gently press that into place. And then attach the remaining moulding to the other side. And don't forget to use your clean cocktail stick to remove any glue from along the join. And that's particularly important if you're going to be varnishing the piece because varnish doesn't take over glue residue. And then once they're both attached that can be left to dry and then we'll attach the back moulding. Okay, so bevel again one long edge of the back moulding, same way as we did for the side mouldings. And then lay the wardrobe face down like that and apply glue along the edges of those side mouldings. And I'm just along the back edge of the wardrobe there. And then attach the moulding so that it's level with the sides. And I've just in the cutting list I've purposely just made this a little bit longer than you need it, so there will be a slight overhang at each side, and that's okay because we can tidy that up once the glue has dried. No need to measure this time because we're just lining it up with the mouldings already in place. Press that down. Push that one up a little bit so you've got a nice flat bottom edge. And again, remove any excess glue. Okay, so again, leave that one to dry. Let's pop that to one side. And then take your front moulding and we're now going to prepare a template to shape the moulding. So cut a piece of paper to the same size as the front moulding, fold it in half and then draw a pattern on it sort of arching out from the centre there. And I just want to keep it simple otherwise it's sort of more difficult to cut out of the wood. So I'm just doing a couple of curves there and then bring it down at the end so you've got a bit of um, a flat edge along that end and that will work as a foot. And then cut that out. And open that out. There's the template. And then just copy that onto the piece of wood. So just place it so that those sort of flat ends are level with the bottom of the wood. Just turn that round a bit. And then just copy the pattern onto the wood. Like that. Okay, and then take your scribe tool and we're just going to etch that line into the wood. So we're not trying to cut through, we're just going to make a groove over the pencil line. And I just find that by using the scribe first, it helps to um, cut out the pattern when you're using the craft knife. It helps the craft knife to stay on track. So just go over all of the pencil. And then bring your craft knife in and if you follow my tutorials you're probably sick of me saying this but please do be careful of your fingers using the craft knife like a pencil just begin to cut into that groove and again not sort of with the intent of cutting it out completely but just making a deeper groove into the wood Do that all the way along. Always being aware of where your fingers are. And then you can go back over it and this time actually just try to 
cut through the wood just little cuts at a time and this does take time so don't try and rush through it and it's well worth practicing on a piece of uh, spare wood it's a really handy technique to know it can be added to lots of different pieces of furniture just to create a nice detail and don't be tempted to pull the wood free wait until you've cut through otherwise you'll just split the wood that can be very annoying when you're almost at the end and then you split the wood and have to start again okay so just keep going until you've removed all the pieces okay so when you've done that take a piece of fine grade sandpaper and just sand sort of straight along the line you've just cut and then you can wrap your um, sandpaper around the end of a pencil or a paintbrush and get into those curves and you only want to lightly sand but you don't want to change the actual shape And wrap it around your finger for larger curves and when you've gone all the way along you can also sand from front to back to create a bit of a, a beveled edge or a chamfered edge along there so keep going until you've tidied the piece up and then when you're happy with your moulding you can create a beveled edge again along that long edge in the same way as we did for the other mouldings And then it's ready to be attached to the wardrobe. So again, apply the glue along those side mouldings. And along the bottom edge. And then you can attach the front mouldings. And with this one, make sure that it's not going over the front of the drawer opening and you'll have problems getting your drawer in and out and again this will be a little bit wider at each side and don't worry about that because we can tidy up those corners once the glue has completely dried press that into place and don't worry either if you've got a little bit overhanging at the bottom because we can sand all that bottom edge flat so that our wardrobe will stand straight and once again that can be left to dry okay so once you've allowed enough time for the glue to dry just check around this bottom edge just go around it with your finger and if you've got any sort of overlapping bits then you want to sand them flat and you can do that by just placing them against the sandpaper and just moving the piece around in a sort of circular motion and I'm not doing it now because it does make an awful sound but just do that a couple of times and then check that you've got a nice flat bottom edge there and that the wardrobe is standing flat and then next take a piece of the harsher grade sandpaper so I'm using the 120 grade here and just sweep it over each corner of the wardrobe from front to back and you just want to flatten off these edges once you've been around each side and you've got nice flush edges at each side, concentrate on the corners. So still with your um, 120 sandpaper, bring it from top to bottom over the corner. And you're just getting rid of those sharp edges there and giving it the appearance of being sort of one piece. And then I've done the back corner, so once you're finished, you should just have a nice smooth continuous corner and not see any wood sticking up at either side so continue your way around okay so in the cutting list I advise you to cut the pieces needed for the drawers after construction of the main unit and that's just because if your drawer stops for example were just slightly shorter or taller um, than advised in the cutting list that will affect the size of the drawer opening
And if you've already cut and built the drawer, it can be quite frustrating when you come to fit it and it won't actually fit. So always construct the piece first. And that goes for any um, furniture or project you're, you're doing that has drawers. So once you've cut the pieces required, always leave in about half a millimetre off each measurement, so height, width and depth, just so that the drawer glides in and out smoothly. And begin construction. And begin by applying glue along each side of the drawer base. And then attach the side pieces so that the front and back of each piece is flush. Keep it as upright as possible. And always um, push things along your work surface rather than trying to pick them up, otherwise they might just fall apart. And just let that dry off for a moment. So when that's been drying long enough so that you can handle it without it falling apart, apply glue along the front and back edges. and then you can attach the front and back pieces. Making sure that these sides are flush with the sides of each piece. Put that piece on there. Pull the sides out to meet the sides of the pieces if you need to. Press it all together. You can remove the excess glue from inside the drawer. And then once again, that can be left to dry before we fit the moulding. OK, so once your drawer piece is completely dried, you can sand it on all edges to make a nice flush piece. And you can sand the top and bottom as well, just go in sort of small circular motions on the sandpaper like that. And I won't do it now because it makes such an awful sound. And then try it into the opening. And you should just have a nice smooth fit and that just sort of drops out easily but if not just keep sanding um, until it does just do a little bit at a time otherwise you might over sand and then you'll have some some gaps around it so then we're going to fit the molding now I've beveled all sides of this and because it's such a thin piece of wood rather than doing it how we would normally do it by sort of sweeping it along the sandpaper like that on the long edges do it across the paper so still holding it at a 45 degree angle, but just sweeping it that way rather than like that because this wood does split very easily. And on the short end you can do it as we normally do along the paper, but just support it as low down as you can with your finger there, rather than sort of holding it up here as it'll split, just support it like that. And then again I finish that off with a piece of fine grade just to go round and tidy up all the edges. So apply glue to the back, to the flat edge, and you don't need to put too much glue on. And then attach it to the front of the drawer so that you're leaving an even border around all edges. And you can just do that by eye. In the cutting list I've allowed about a millimetre around each side. And then just hold that into place while you remove any of the glue that's coming out there at the edges. And then as I've said before, if you're attaching um, mouldings to things, the wood will try and curl upwards as it dries, so you always need to secure them in place. And to do that I'm going to use these clamps and just put one at either end. I'll just pop one in the middle. And these clamps are so handy and they're actually available in my Etsy store. You'll find the link below. And then that can just be left to dry and then we'll come back and attach our handles. Okay, so once you've allowed enough time for the glue to dry, remove the clamps and we can now put the um, draw knobs into place. So we're going to do them 15 millimetres from each end. So if you start by making a pencil mark 15 millimetres or I think it's 5 eighths of an inch from each end and just a faint pencil mark going down like that and the same at the other end 
and then turn the piece like that and then you can make a pencil mark in the centre of the drawer from top to bottom. Just do a little dot like that. Same at the other end. Just there. And then rub out the pencil mark and the dot will stay. Like that. And then I've got a 1.5mm um, drill bit in here, this mini drill. Just place it on top of the pencil mark. And don't press too hard when you're doing this because the drawer, drawer front is quite fragile because it's so long. And then once you're through, just wiggle the drill bit about like that. It just helps the draw knob stem to go in easier. And then do your other hole. Just put that there. And then just check that the draw knob fits before you sort of apply the glue. That should fit nice and snugly in there. Which it does. Other end as well. Just get rid of that dust and then just put a little blob of glue over the hole I'll just drop naturally into the hole then and then you can attach the draw knobs There'll be a little bit of an overhang inside, but you can sand that off. Make sure they're pressed right in so that they sit straight. You can just sand away, like I say, the overhang inside and the wood that it pushes through. Like that. And then, again, it's really important to get rid of the um, excess glue from around the draw knobs, otherwise when you come to varnish it, you'll be able to see a different coloured patch. Doesn't look very nice. So remove as much as you can with a cocktail stick, and then you can sand as you prepare for varnish. do the doors. So again in the cutting list as with the drawers I advise you to cut the doors after the construction of the main unit and again that's just due to slight misplacement of this piece or this piece or sometimes the wood can be thicker um, than the 1.5 millimeter so just it's always just safer to construct first and then measure um, and again you just measure the height and deduct half a millimeter or 1 32nd of an inch Measure the width, divide it by two for the two doors, and then deduct the half a millimetre from each. And that will just mean that they'll open and close smoothly. Okay, so once you've cut the doors, just pop them to one side. Okay, so we're going to begin by applying the mouldings to the left-hand door. The doors are a mirror image of each other, so we'll start with the left-hand door. So take the top moulding, which is the largest piece, and make a pencil mark five millimetres. I think that's 13 sixty-fourths of an inch along the bottom edge, five millimetres from the left-hand side. And then turn the piece around and make a second pencil mark, five millimetres from the top edge, like that. And then draw a curve between those points, like that. And we're going to shape this the same as we did with the bottom moulding. So take your scribe tool and you just want to score that line into the wood, just very lightly. And it's much easier when you're working on a thinner piece of wood to cut it out. But also be aware that it can sort of split more easily. So just go extra, extra careful when you're working on a thinner piece. That. 
then take your craft knife, be careful of your fingers, and just begin by going over that score, just very lightly. And I always just like to do a little snip in the corner there when I'm doing this on a thinner piece, and at that end as well. And then you can start trying to cut through the wood. And again, take your time. Again, don't be tempted to pull the wood away. There. Like that. Let's get rid of that piece. We've got the curve. And then take um, the top moulding for the right hand door and turn this piece over. In fact, I'll just sand off that little. Um, lump there in the middle. Let me just cut that out. Like that. Okay, so we're going to now use this as a template for the other door. So turn it over and then just copy that with your pencil. Like that. Leave that piece to one side for now and then you can tidy up this first piece. Now this piece here, we want to remain 5mm, so try not to sand into it and also want a flat edge along there and that's for our side mouldings to butt up against. So sand along the cut and then you can also sand very gently from front to back once you've tidied that piece up, that can be glued into place. Apply glue to the back of the moulding. Just lay that along that top edge so that the side and top is flush with the side and top of the door there. Again, use your spare cocktail stick to remove any excess glue. And you can attach the long moulding, the long side moulding. Put that up there with the edge of that curve. And again, so that that's flush with the side of the door. Just use your finger on there to check. And the short side moulding. And I'll sand around all of these again before I varnish. And then finally attach the bottom moulding. And then again, so the mouldings don't try and curl away from the wood, just use some clamps to hold these all into place. You could use some um, clothes pegs as well if you don't have enough clamps. These clamps are nice and tight, so they do the job really well. And I'm putting one over each um, join as well. I'll just pop a couple more in the middle of those side supports. Okay, so once that's done, you can follow that same procedure to create the right hand door and just as a mirror image of the left hand door. Okay, and then with your sandpaper on your worktop, we're now going to round one long edge of each door, and it's the long edge that's got the short moulding. So put it on the sandpaper, hold it at a 45 degree angle, and just sweep it towards you, and as you do so, just bring it into an upright position. So just like that.
And you don't have to do it many times before it starts to round off. Support the paper with the other hand. Like that, and then you can turn it over and do the other side. And so you've got a nice rounded edge down that side, I'm showing you there from the sort of bottom angle and that just helps the door open and close more smoothly so do that with both doors and again on this left hand door down that left hand edge okay so once you've rounded one side of each door drill a hole the 0.75 millimeter hole again in the top and bottom of the door on that rounded edge and the hole should be two millimetres back from the front edge of the door and 1.5 millimetres in from that rounded edge and that's the same distance that we did the hole from the top um, top of the wardrobe and the shelf piece if you remember so do that on each of the doors again supporting them in your desk vise so we can now fit the um, doorknob. So begin by making a pencil mark in the centre of that long side of the door. Just do a faint pencil line across like that and then turn and you can do your pencil dot in the middle of that long moulding. Raise the pencil line and drill your hole and again just wiggle the drill bit about before you take that out check that your doorknob fits nicely to the hole and then you could apply your little dot of glue like that and then press the doorknob into place like that and remember to remove the excess glue from around the doorknob so take your wardrobe top piece and we're going to bevel one long edge on both sides so hold it against the sandpaper at a 45 degree angle and just sweep it towards you keeping it at that angle Do that until you've got a nice even bevel around all edges. And now the piece is ready um, to varnish. And I always like to varnish the pieces separately. Um, if you fit the doors first, you, you find that you can't really varnish down the edges. So you always have those sort of bare wood um, showing through, which I don't like. So I always do the doors and the top and then the actual unit and drawer separately. And then we'll come back and fit it all together. And just a little tip for when you're doing the top piece, so that you don't get varnish on your hands, stick a piece of masking tape to the bevelled side. The bevelled side will be attached to the top. And just make it into like a loop, like that. And then just use an extra little bit of tape at each end, just to hold that down. And then you want to varnish around these edges and just go around the edge of the, uh, this underside and then obviously do the, the top as well. And that just means you can hold it with that and then once it's varnished you can use that as a prop to prop it up to dry. Okay so each piece has now had one coat of varnish and then I've given it a light sand and once the piece is finished then I'll apply another light coat just to the front of the drawer and the exposed areas just to finish it off. So begin by taking a dressmaking pin and just poking it into each of the holes um, that you drilled in the doors and in the wardrobe and that will just remove any varnish that may have seeped into the holes. And then insert a pin into each hole Oops. and then just very gently press it down on the worktop just to make sure it's going in as far as it can. But don't push too hard as you might split through the wood. And 
and then use your pliers to trim each pin so it's about six millimetres or a quarter of an inch in length. Like that. Same at the bottom. And then remove the top pin. Just pop that to one side and begin by inserting the pin at the bottom of the door into the hole at the bottom of the wardrobe. Push that in and then move the door into place and then you can take the top pin just pop that in and it should go right into the hole that you made in the top of the door and then before you push it right in just check that the door opens nicely if not you can remove this top pin and you may just need to sand away some of the varnish just to ensure a nice flush fit. But if you're happy with how that's opening and closing, you can press that top pin in as far as it will go. And it's important to do that check before you push it all the way in because once they're in, it's very difficult to get them out without splitting the door. There, there's the first door. And then you can just repeat that process with your remaining door. Okay, so once your doors are fitted, apply glue to the top of the wardrobe. I'll just use a cocktail stick to spread that out. Make sure you get it right into the corners and along the edges. And then you can attach the top piece. So the bevel side should be facing down, the straight edge at the back, and the straight edge should be flush with the back of the wardrobe. Just use your fingers to make sure that it's flush. And then there should be an even overhang at either side. And that's normally the thickness of the bevel. So make sure that that's straight. Check along the back as well. And then I like to use tape and clamps when I'm fitting these tops. Have the doors open. So I'm just going to pop a couple of pieces of tape over the top. One at the back there like that. And make sure when you've done that that everything's staying where it should. And I'll just pop another piece over this front edge. And then just turn it around and just pop a couple of pieces over that back edge and that will stop that back from lifting. Like that. I'm just going to open those doors a little bit more and I'm going to use these clamps along that inside edge and again that's to stop um, the wood from lifting. You can see there, there is a gap along there so if you don't um, sort of clamp wood down, you'll find that it lifts away once the glue's dried. It will, it will just stay like that. So always clamp things down. And you can never use too many clamps either, so get in as many as you can fit. I'll just see if I can just squeeze one more in there. Okay, so I'm going to leave that to dry. I need to lay that down now, it's top heavy. And then I'll just apply one final light coat of varnish. And there is the completed wardrobe. Now on my channel you'll find other projects to match this piece, um, including a single bed, bedside cabinets, a blanket chest, and now the wardrobe and very shortly I'll be doing a dressing table in a similar style. So you've got everything there to furnish um, a 12th scale bedroom. I hope you enjoyed this project today. If so please subscribe to the channel as there's lots more to come and you also might like to have a look at my book Step by Step Doll's House Furniture Projects in 1 12th Scale 
The book is available from Amazon and I'll pop a couple of links below. And there's over 27 pieces of furniture in there, something for each room of the house. So if you enjoy making th furniture, I think you'll enjoy it. And for now, thank you for watching and I hope to see you again soon.